got another set of questions on the enthalpy and entropy topic. So we're up to number 14 now. So this one includes a dot and cross diagram for an ionic compound, enthalpy change of solution cycles, and some calorimetry calculations. I hope you enjoy the video, and if you haven't already subscribed, why don't you subscribe, and you can let me know in the comments some future topics you'd like me to cover. As always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try it first. Okay, so make a start. So you can see I've already put in the dot and cross diagram for calcium chloride. Just quickly talk about the calcium 2 plus ion. You notice I haven't put any electrons in this outer shell. You could put 8 in, but because I've used crosses here for the chloride ions that have come, the electrons from the calcium, then I would have to use crosses there. Part B, what's meant by the term enthalpy change of solution? So it's just your definition recall. So that's the enthalpy change when one mole of a substance dissolves completely in water. Now I have made a video for all the sort of inorganic and physical definitions. I'll put the link at the top of the screen now. Moving on to part C, so we've got to populate the dotted lines with the species present and include state symbols. So I'll start on the top line here. So we've got our gaseous ions here. So obviously that's Ca2 plus gas and 2 Cl minus gas. Go down to the bottom next. So what have we got on here? We've got the aqueous ions. Now it's not required for this part of the question to say what these enthalpy changes are, but it's going to help with the explanation of the calculation. So that enthalpy change there, this one, is the enthalpy change of solution for the calcium chloride. So these two arrows here, these represent the enthalpy change of hydration of the positive and negative ions. So I normally do the positive ion first. So that means I need a Ca2 plus aqueous on this line, but I'm leaving the two chloride ions as gaseous ions. So that's the enthalpy change of hydration of the calcium 2 plus. And then this change here is the enthalpy change of hydration of the chloride ions. So I'm just going to leave the cycle on the screen while I explain the, how the calculation works. You'll notice I've put two different coloured arrows on. So we want to calculate the enthalpy change of solution, which I'm representing by this pink arrow here. So it starts there, finishes there. So the other way to get from here to here is round this blue route. So you'll notice that the arrow for the enthalpy, the lattice enthalpy, sorry, is in the wrong direction for the route. So we want to go up, but that's coming down. So all we do is we subtract that, but then add those two together because these two arrows are in the right direction. So delta H sol equals the sum of the hydration enthalpies minus this lattice enthalpy. So all I need to do now is put the numbers in from the table. So there's the numbers there. Just remember to double the enthalpy change of hydration of chloride ions because there's two moles of them in the cycle. So the answer comes out at minus 142 kilojoules per mole. Moving on to the next part, we've got to explain the difference between the enthalpy changes of hydration for these metal ions. You'll notice I've written up ionic charge, ionic radius. So these are the factors that affect enthalpy change of hydration. So the first one we'll deal with is ionic charge. So you can see there's a definite correlation between the ionic charge and the amount of energy released in the enthalpy changes of hydration. So all we need to say is the greater the charge, the more exothermic the hydration enthalpy, and that's because the ions are more strongly attracted to H2O. The oxygen of the H2O is gonna be attracted to these positively charged ions and obviously release energy in the process. So that's the first factor covered. So ionic radius, we can explain using the two, two plus ions, calcium two plus and magnesium two plus. So you'll notice the calcium two plus is the less exothermic of the two. So why is that? It's got a larger ionic radius than magnesium ions, extra shell, and so therefore there'll be a weaker attraction with the water molecule for the calcium 2 plus ion compared to the magnesium 2 plus. Moving on to part D now, so we've got this data here about student one's experiment where they've 
calculated ends up exchange of solution for calcium chloride directly. So it's a calorimetry experiment. So we're going to be using the Q equals MC delta T equation. So the first thing we're going to do is work out the mass of calcium chloride used, the mass of the solution that was heated up, and the temperature rise for the solution. So I'm getting 5.56 grams of calcium chloride, obviously the difference between those two. The solution mass difference between those two, 50.21 grams. You'll notice I've highlighted here, it says in bullet point two, add about 50 cm cubed of water. That's the exact mass of the solution, so that's the mass that needs to go into our MC delta T equation. I imagine some students will have put that when this uh, paper was actually set. And obviously the delta T is the difference between those two, 31.5 degrees C. So there's my Q equals MC delta T calculation. So I'm getting that many joules, which we need to put into kilojoules, because the final answer needs to be in kilojoules per mole. So 6.611, I've left there the rest of the number in the calculator, kilojoules. Next thing we do is work out the moles of calcium chloride. So just mass over MR, 0.05. The delta H is the kilojoules per mole, so kilojoules divided by moles, so 132.08. It's an exothermic reaction. I always put the sign in at the end, it's just the way I do it. So it's exothermic, the solution got hotter, so we need a negative sign, and we now just need to put it into an appropriate number of significant figures, which for this question would be 3. So it's minus 132 kilojoules per mole. And the reason it needs to be 3 significant figures is because you've got to go on the data that's the least accurate. So if you look at all these numbers here, we've got four significant figures, but then we've got three for the temperature. So that's our, that's why three is appropriate. And the final part of the question, potentially tricky, sort of to get your head around this bit. So student two's done the same experiment, but they've used twice the mass of calcium chloride, but everything else is the same or similar to student one's. So we've got a comment on the temperature change. Would it be the same or different um, as the first student? And also the enthalpy change of solution. So temperature first, student two's used double the mass of calcium chloride, but the volume of water being heated up is the same. So it's gonna get twice as hot. So the temperature rise would be double. So moving on to the enthalpy change of solution for student two. So if we think about what the knock-on effect of the double temperature rise would be, so the mass of solutions the same, specific heat capacity of the solutions the same, delta T is doubled, so their Q value is going to be double, but their moles value will also be double because we've used twice the mass. So the ratio of Q to moles is still the same, so the enthalpy change of solution will be the same.